what's good youtube it's josh creates here with another video in today's video we got tiktok vent about living below your means the benefits of living below your means honestly i think this is a good topic this could really help save money but let's hear other people's opinions about it but first it is sorry it is christmas um merry christmas by the time this video gets rolled out it'll be uh the next day so merry belated christmas and uh yeah without further ado let's get right into this video when you live paycheck to paycheck you feel trapped if i quit my job i'm not gonna make rent i'm gonna lose my house and my question is like lose the house the amount of 25 to 30 year olds that should move back in with their parents around the world is staggeringly high if their KPI is happiness. One step backwards, two steps forward. Luckily for a lot of people, their parents would be thrilled. Their ego wouldn't be thrilled, right? My advice to people that feel stuck is you're stuck because you're living within the means of your take home. And if you can go 20 to 50% lower than that, well then you've started to create the room for you to be able to get out. All I've been pushing for 15 years is like, in your 20s, go for it. Because this is the generation you can live with four guys in a fucking studio apartment and eat fucking McDonald's and call it a day. You start becoming 37 and you have a child and like, you're in a different game. But even for a 37 year old that has a mortgage, and if you live more humble, you can like create that freedom. Gary, you don't get it. I'm fucking living bare bones. I'm like, do you take Uber? Yeah, every day. I'm like, that's ridiculous. Take the bus. I'm like, do you order food? Right. Yes. Cook at home. You'll save a fortune. You're telling me you're miserable. You're telling me that you want to live your dream you're not willing to take the bus for your dream, then you're full of shit. Facts. Oh my gosh. I would take the bus. That's how I am. I would take the bus over Uber, like wasting money on Uber any day. Like, it's it's not even a thought process. I'll instantly take the bus. That's like the first choice, first option. From my first year, I made $18,000 a year but my expenses were $2,200 a month. So fortunately it was in a sales game where there was commission ability. That next year I made 50,000, the year after I got to 100,000, the year after I got to more. And I remember, um, I just, my wife and I, we kept our expenses at 2,200, crappy 20, like nothing living on, like poverty by choice, but not in mindset, $2,200 a month. And we got to the point where we were making a quarter million dollars a year, still living off of 2,200. Well, that's a wow. Listen to me when I tell you living below your means is going to allow you to have the space in your budget to create the lifestyle that you want. So you can have financial peace, financial stability, financial growth and financial success. So I think there's a large misconception about saving money. People get really worried about like their iced coffees or like the clothes that they're buying and all that type of stuff. And they completely gloss over everyday expenses. Controlling your spending habits is a very important part of saving money, but you also have to look at your monthly and like regular everyday expenses. This is your rent or your mortgage, your utilities. What does your grocery bill look like? What is your car payment? Like what is your gas? Those are the major factors that attribute to whether you're living below your means or not. Like take the laundry detergent that I make, for example, you know, groceries was a bill that I was just tired of like wincing when I paid. And so I looked and I was like, what's costing so much? Like what is making this so expensive? And it was like disposables. It was the things like detergent, like 16, $20 a bottle is ridiculous. So it's stuff like that, like hacking your way into not paying as much, like paying attention to where you live and like what premiums are you paying for convenience rather than things that you can do for yourself or that is are easy to swap and stuff like that. I got started with like money saving tips and little life hacks because I was just trying to pay attention to what was costing me the most money in everyday life that was making my monthly expenses way too high or higher than I was comfortable with. I just right. kept asking myself, how can I hack my way into a cheaper life without giving up my standard of living? Mm. Live below your means. The happiest people are the people who live below their means. When you can get Gucci, go to Marshalls. When you can get a Ferrari, get a Toyota. Yep. Broke people try to look rich when rich people try to look broke. That's why I came up with the with the phrase, act broke, live rich. Act broke so you can live rich, I'm telling you. Shop on OfferUp. See if you could, whatever you want, see if you could buy it cheaper on a third-party app before you buy it full price. How are people affording life right now? I have a feeling some of y'all aren't going to like what I have to say, but I'm going to say it anyway because I love you and I want you to win. 
taking all emotions aside, if you are struggling right now to make ends meet, you need to ask yourself the hard questions. Do I need to increase my income or do I need to decrease my spending? Some of y'all are out here not wanting to take a hard look at your situation and see what your reality is. And that's the other thing. Number two, you need to choose reality. Maybe you had a plan to drive this fancy car because you think you deserve it. And maybe your reality is you can't afford that car payment. I promise you, you are not struggling because of the basic needs. Has life gotten more expensive? Yes, of course it has. But but your problem is not the basic need. You are struggling because you are choosing to live way above your means. And before y'all come at me, I see all the $300, $400 hauls that y'all are doing. And I'm like, aren't these the same people that are saying they're struggling? Like, why are you doing that? Or the sold out shows that all these artists are having, who's filling that up? You guys are. Again, you got to take a hard look at your situation and control what you can control. And there is a lot you guys are not choosing to control. What I do is I live way below my means. That's the number one rule. Live below your means. Stop trying to impress Sam, Sarah, and Suzanne. If you do that, you'll be in a position to win. Put a little to the side every month, every week, every day, whatever you suggest for yourself. And start stacking. Once you stack that, invest in yourself. Money in the bank sitting is a waste. Always invest in yourself. Take the chance on yourself. Bet on yourself. You can't lose. This is how to live below your means so y'all can be financially free. Living below your means is just a financial principle that made people into millionaires. The goal is to increase your income without upgrading your lifestyle. The first step to start living below your means is to have a very inexpensive lifestyle. Do not go out there and get a luxury apartment. Start off with a very cheap apartment. Of course, it doesn't have to look like this. Just as long as that your rent doesn't take over your whole paycheck because that's the worst thing that you can do. And I'm not saying to live off top rom in your whole life. I'm just saying when you start off, make sure you have room in your paycheck. That way you can start saving your money. This also means you shouldn't go out and get an expensive car loan. You're living below your means, not wasting your money. Go and buy a cheap ass car on Facebook Marketplace like I did and spend 5K. Now you're gonna have really cheap rent and you're not gonna have an expensive car loan. You're doing better than 90% of people right now. Now your goal is to save all of this extra money and use it for things like funding a business. Now as your salary increases, make sure you keep your living the same way because eventually you're gonna make 100 grand a year and you're gonna still be spending 40. You're gonna have $60,000 to save every year. Then hey, maybe it's time to move out to a tiny home because honestly, this looks pretty dope and I don't need that much space anyways. This is what living below your means like and if you can just do this as early as possible when it's most acceptable when you're young, you can retire by 30. But you have to be disciplined. Follow me for more advice. Yeah, shout out to him. He sounds like he knows what he's saying. He sounds like he has some very much knowledge and living below your means. But he is right. Um, He did state it in the beginning. Living below your means is simply like increasing the amount you make by not increasing like not really increasing the lifestyle that you choose to live like don't spend that much money on stu random stuff and like try not to add another bill into your category of bills your list of bills but just increase the, your your income some way somehow that's how you live above your, that's how you live below your means i mean why do i need money so you don't like go crazy you don't have a ferrari or anything nuts no i i think living your life chasing like a nicer nicer car and a bigger and bigger box to live in is kind of like a dumb way to, to go about life um, yeah yeah so i i actually funny enough i lived in like a super below average home and i kind of learned why famous people don't live in uh below average homes because someone broke in stole everything i owned so i had to i had to get a little nicer house for security reasons but before i was robbed i mean like my place is like a little duplex 700 a month you, you get a roommate's 360 split <laughs> right you don't go crazy at all with cash no. you don't no. I, I really try not to i, I think that's like just a, a bad way to go about life exactly like he like he said it's a bad way to go about with his life like honestly these millionaires don't really need especially if you don't have any kids let's say for instance you don't have any kids right you're a millionaire what the heck do you need like a big house for you could literally get a regular house. Yes, Mr. Beast just said like uh, he had to get like a, a better house because of security purposes. But at the same time, you don't. I'm pretty sure it doesn't have to be super lavish, but you could get somewhere very decent and also upgrade your security, meaning you could add extra more cameras. You could add like uh, movement sensors. You could put shutters on the doors 
just in case somebody comes in and like try to break the window, but they can't because there's shutters on the door. You could do all these things like you could upgrade your home to make it more security stable. Even in even in an apartment, you could do that. Like, there's so many tips and tricks and, like, different gadgets you could go out and buy to upgrade the security on your home where you don't have to spend that much money. And there's so many things that you could do as well as everyday people, for example, to save um, money, as an example. For example, um, if you want a new phone, let's say your phone has a SIM card, you could go on OfferUp. People are selling, reselling phones. Make sure it's local, though, where you can meet up with the person. Uh Take the SIM card out your old phone. Put it in the, the the phone that you may or may not buy. See if it works. See if it's your liking. And, hey, spend that money. Spend the amount of money that whoever's selling the new phone that you want uh, to you. Like, spend that type of money. It's going to be cheaper. It's not going to be, like, full Apple price or full Samsung price, like, almost like $1,000. It's going to be, like, at least $200 cheaper. If you want a nice, decent shirt or a decent outfit, you don't always have to hit up the mall. You could hit up different. You could go thrifting. And it doesn't have to be your local thrift stores. It could just be you could migrate to like other thrift stores and check out something. Try something new or maybe order something off of OfferUp or Macari. That's very cheap. A lot of people are selling cheap shirts and pants on OfferUp. But um, yeah, guys, that is it for this video. This video is about living below your means. I know it wasn't that much, but uh, it, I had to put out some type of video. I, I was going to go like two days without it, without putting up a video. Um, you know, I was just basically very busy and tired getting ready for the holidays. And, you know, it's after Christmas now. And now um, I could focus more and, you know, put out more videos and but. Anyways, let me hear your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below about this video. And what other type of videos would you guys like me to put out? Um, needless to say, everything will be okay. My name is Josh Creates. I'm out.